passage for my sermon this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, 22 through 30. I'll be using the New Revised Standard Version. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God grant us wisdom and courage for interpretation. In our gospel reading for this morning, when Jesus is questioned about who he is, he gives a very straightforward response. Jesus is portrayed in the Gospel of John as telling his questioners that his works bear witness. His works testify to who he was and that those who follow his way would see that he is living in radical unity with the Creator, that he and the Creator are one. Notice that Jesus did not say that his questioners should recognize who he is based on the theology he was teaching, or because he believed or was teaching the correct set of doctrines about God. Rather, they should recognize who he is because of what he is doing in the world. Because what he is doing in the world. I hate to say this, but I think it's true. I think most of American Christianity does not recognize who Jesus really is because it puts a warped view of American before Christianity. It puts a warped view of American before following Jesus. And we Christians who live in the United States, we must reject it. What we are seeing in the Christianity of the United States is a battle over whether the way of Jesus will have any real practical influence in the life of the churches and in the life of persons who call themselves Christian. Christians and Christian churches who do not welcome the stranger, who do not seek justice for the poor and the oppressed, who do not care for the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the homeless, the imprisoned, who do not care for all of creation, are living in such a way as if the life and teachings of Jesus are wholly irrelevant. Many have put nationalism, and in many cases race, before the way of Jesus. They have put fear and hatred and their own desire for security before Jesus' call to justice for all people, to love all of our neighbors, and to be not afraid. They have exiled Jesus from their churches, churches that would make Jesus weep that 
his name is being associated with the very expressions of hatred, fear, and corrupt power that Jesus gave his very life to resist. The news that such Christians and such churches bring to the world is not good news. It is not good news for the poor and the oppressed. That was the clarion call of Jesus' work in this world. Rather, it is news of exclusion, control, fear, and oppression of the weak and vulnerable in our midst. It is the news of exploitation of the community of all creation, rather than its care. The religious freedom that such Christians and churches seek is a freedom to discriminate and exclude and control rather than a responsible freedom that seeks love and justice for all. Jesus would set foot in such churches for only one reason, to turn over the tables of injustice and to call all of us to repentance, to turn away from fear, to turn away from hate and nationalism so that we might turn our lives towards the good news of beloved community. The response that such Christians and churches would make to Jesus' message would likely be similar to the violent rejection that Jesus received at the hands of the corrupt power of the empire of his day. Most of American Christianity today would not recognize who Jesus really is because most of American Christianity is not following the way of Jesus. Jesus said we should know who he is by the works that testify to who he is. You know, works like healing people instead of denying them access to health care loving people, and taking seriously the complexities of the challenges that they are facing, bringing good news and working for justice and liberation for the poor and the oppressed, welcoming strangers instead of vilifying them, clothing, feeding, and sheltering the naked, the hungry, and the homeless rather than blaming them or ignoring them their plight. We should know who Jesus is by these works that bear witness to love, that bear witness to justice, the love and justice of God in our world. And if we truly follow Jesus, our lives and our world must also bear witness to the love and justice of God in our world. And today, we who call ourselves followers of Jesus, we who strive to follow the way of Jesus in this world, we have some difficult questions to ask ourselves. We cannot avoid these questions. We cannot simply be silent in the face of these questions. We have to ask them and attempt with wisdom, courage, and compassion to answer these questions. There are some very important questions that we cannot ignore in this dangerous and increasingly autocratic and authoritarian time in our land. Do we really think that the way of Jesus is about forcing women to bear the children of their rapists? Do we really think that the way of Jesus is about forcing victims of incest to continue their pregnancies? Do we really think the way of Jesus is about forcing women to give birth to children that their doctors have told them will have no quality of life? Do we really think that the way of Jesus is about forcing women to continue a pregnancy that threatens their health or even the life 
of the mother. Do we really think that the way of Jesus is about forcing women to be mothers against their will and to take decisions about reproductive health and reproductive choice away from them? Do we really think that that is the way of Jesus in this world? Is forcing women to have children really the way of Jesus? Are these really the works that bear witness to the way of God's love and justice in our world? Or is this more about controlling? Is this more about controlling women than it is about loving them? Is this more about perpetuating patriarchy than it is about concern for life? I don't think it's a coincidence that the forms of Christianity that oppose reproductive choice the most are also the most patriarchal forms of Christianity and are the expressions of Christianity that do not allow women to even be ordained. I also don't think it is a coincidence, coincidence that the areas of our country that are most opposed to reproductive choice are the same areas that fought a civil war for the cause of continuing to have control over other people's lives through the evil institution of slavery. May we all have the wisdom and courage to discern the best ways to bear witness to the way of God's love and justice in this world. May our works bear witness to the way of Jesus in this world. And the way of Jesus is a way of love. It's loving people in all the complexities of their context. It is not a way of coercion or control. And the church said, 